Good day, everyone. This is the Oyster, Master Instructor at the Academy of the Cuban Arts. I'd like to go to the email files today and take a look at an email I received this morning from a Jessica. And she writes, Dear Oyster, thank you very much for the DVD series I purchased last week. I just finished watching volumes one and six as you instructed in your letter. I have to say how amazing and valuable the information has been so far. I have been searching for exactly this kind of instruction for a long time and I'm so thankful for you and for what you have already done for me. Before I get too much further, I have one question for you. In volume number one, you explain the slip cue. I was wondering what effects the slip cue has on the cue ball during the stroke. Thank you again, sincerely Jessica. Well, thank you very much, Jessica, for that, and that's a very good question. I'm not going to go into detail about the slip cue and the mechanics of the stroke, uh, because that's covered in Volume 1 and Volume 6 of the DVD series. But I would like to answer the question as far as how the mechanics of the arm come into play with using the slip cue as the tip goes through the cue ball. And I have a couple questions for you that I'd like you to think about. The first question is, what does the cue, how does the cue stop when it goes backwards in your, in your backstroke? Well, all of us know that we don't hit the cue ball behind us, we hit the cue ball in front of us. So the, the major aspect of the stroke is the forward motion, the forward motion of the cue going through the cue ball. But what stops the cue from going backwards and what stops the cue from going forwards? Or what stops the arm from going backward and what stops the arm from going forward?
learned in volume one, the importance of the slip cue is allowing that motion, that natural motion that you generated with your contraction of the bicep to keep that cue moving forward through the cue ball without resistance. Now that's very similar to a golf swing. I have my 8 iron and I hit my 8 iron 140 right on the money with a full, full swing. So imagine my, one, my, my golf ball down there. The ball goes 140. Now, I want you to imagine the golf ball again. I still have the same club, still the 8 iron. It still has the same amount of spin as the last shot of my 8 iron. So I'm not changing my spin. That, the spin changes in golf by changing clubs. The spin changes in, in the cue sports by changing the tip position of the ball. And in both sports, we keep the swing the same or the stroke the same. You just change clubs for the golf swing and you just change the tip position for the cue sports. We're getting back to the stroke or the swing on golf. How far did the ball go? Nowhere near 140 yards. Why not? I went through the golf ball. In other words, I followed through the golf ball on both swings. So what's the difference? The difference is what I did going through the ball and past the ball. On the first swing, there was constant re-acceleration all the way through to the very end. On the second golf swing, I followed through, but I stopped short. Now the only way that I can stop short here is to start slowing down at the bottom of the swing. I can't instantaneously stop here. There's nothing there to hit. There's nothing there to stop me. Muscles don't stop on a dime. They gradually stop. So, on my second swing, I started contracting my muscles here before I even hit the ball, decelerating the club, and I was a constant deceleration all the way until it stopped. Now, if I had a wall right there, I would be able to swing fully, increase my speed, and slam into the wall, and I would still and I would get 140 yards out of it. 